One by one, your party falls. Did we just leave Jack to die? Krylon, did we just leave Jack to die? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. There has been violence on those bones. What must I do? How do I get back on the path? Pray for Jack! Pray. I am not an educated dwarf. Is he talking? Is he talking right now? I can't hear him. You still sense the presence of these four stone giants. Through dark and wet and cold and lonely, we will make it through. Hello all and welcome back to Dice Shame. This is episode 25, Caught Short. This week's MVP is Kellen Holman for his amazing work helping us with Invictus Con this past weekend. Speaking of Invictus Con, thank you so much to all who came out and supported us and each other during this time. Yeah, we wanted this to be something special and it was a resounding success complete with amazing RPGs, video game servers, and community games. Thank you all. We cannot wait to see you next year. Should we do this? Yep. Hey guys! Hi. Hi. So it's a party of three. Uh, <laughs> and you know, it's, it's of course it's right after Red and Jack get back together, and now we are down a Jack. Yep, you are wizardless, Jackless, and he was he was great at battlefield control. Yeah, I mean yeah. he was the one. I mean Doran's going to be running up, slashing. You're going to be healing, Kraloth. Yeah. Uh, and healing Kraloth, and I'm going to be doing damage, but we don't have anybody to push a flaming sphere into people. Yeah, like, true. You know, now with Jack off, J- yes. Like, Jack, what, what, Jack what are we going to do? Kraloth on, Red on, Doran on, Jack. Jack off. Kieran uh. is also nowhere to be seen. Uh. That's right. And finally, adding insult to injury, you ride for 10 minutes or more before you realize you left Oren in the ditch. <laughs> oh, we saw our friend get taken by yeah. a giant and like what happened like not it, just taken like absorbed into the giant's stone what flesh what the hell is going on that's here? a thing that stone giants can do apparently, apparently? yeah apparently. i yeah. mean i feel like that is the biggest moment that's the biggest realization this time i mean red is riding yeah. away and after a fair amount of distance and his eyes are just locked on the road you know he's just yeah. galloping and galloping and then slows to a trot and just uh <sighs> What the hell just happened? Did we just leave Jack to die? Cry Did we just leave Jack to die? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Quiet down, quiet down. Doran, bring it in. What, yeah, yeah. What, what was that? Where's the little halfling man? He was with Jack. He was with Jack. We left Oren behind we too? Left Jack and Oren. We're going to have to go back. We what? have to get Jack. No, we can't go back. There were four stug giants. Did you see them? Nearly killed you. Well, not to mention, like, I got hit. Dorian, oh, you yeah. got hit. I'm down to 49 hit points. Yeah, you're like bleeding. Okay, well, I think we've lost them for now. Jack got one-handed paralyzed, Walloped. whatever that was. Yeah, so we... I feel like we're going to have to pull like a Princess Leia, get dressed up and go save Han. Ooh, I like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, put Carbon. on our uh, giant costumes. That's right. That's my <laughs> 30 feet <laughs> taller. <laughs> what, what did we just experience? I don't know. I want to do a nature check or something like how would i know what i just they are my greater favorite enemy right, right, i can right. roll can i roll with advantage on information to find out what the hell just happened with yeah. is he dead is he have we lost jack for good it, it looked like you definitely he was can. turned to stone 13 okay with a 13 when you were observing the giants uh looking back over your shoulder as you were galloping away you noticed that the giant that picked up Jack and absorbed him into her bicep, she was differently shaped than the other three stone giants. She had shapes protruding from her, from her limbs. You thought you could identify maybe an anchor. Mm. From this observation, it occurs to you that stone giants can probably meld with stone and also petrify items oh. certain stone giant skin so this giant this giant's kind of clever using two abilities mm. petrify meld with stone bada bing bada boom red composes himself uh rears asta off the road a little bit and hops down um what time of day is it again 
It's early evening. I picture the rain sort of wetting down Red's fur as he jumps off his horse and has a little moment. <laughs> that, that giant, I had a good look. It, it looked like it had other objects protruding from it, like, like it picks up things and, and sticks them into its skin. I, I, I didn't get it. Jack probably would, but we need to get him back. I wonder if that increases its strength or durability or... <laughs> I don't know, but you're right, Red. We do have to get him back. I feel terrible that we left him. We can't start beating ourselves up. We did the right thing at that time. If if we had stayed behind, we would be no more than three red blotches on the road. So that's right. I can track these things. And I have greater favored enemy. I can detect giants within five miles uh, as part of my level six ability. And I haven't actually used it yet. So Red's not too worried about tracking these guys down, as well as the advantage to tracking them. Right. But uh, But we need to rest. You're hurt. Yeah. I'm hurt. It's been a long day. And if she absorbed him into her skin, if if she's taking Jack, it's not likely she's trying to kill him, which at least gives us some time. Unless he's already dead. I mean, don't talk maybe, like that, Don. I can't think like that. Well, right I'm, now. I'm sorry, Red, that, but I'm just I'm just saying it like it is. We we need to at least find out because if he's dead, then we have to kill that giant. Chisel him out and give him a proper burial. Justin, would you like to roll a uh, religion check or an arcana check on the uh, abilities your cleric might have in terms of restoring a petrified creature? Can I just pray? That should save them. Let's, let's just, just open let's pray. Just pray. Let's just oh, pray yeah, for yeah, Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pray for Jack. Pray for Jack. Pray. Hashtag. Let's all join Jack. hands. <laughs> Candlelight vigil. Yeah. So that should bring him back. Where hopes and prayers actually matter. It's a natural one. Oh, oh my no. God. Bye, Shame Jack. on you. Kraloth pulls himself off of Glynn, throws his mace to the ground, and says, uh, what about Orin? I, I feel I feel almost worse about that little guy. Leaving him like that. I mean, we, we saw what happened to Jack. I'm going to spend a minute, and I'm going to detect giants in a five-mile radius. I'm going to see if they moved away. Perfect. Because if, if they moved away, Orin would still be hiding. Right. I mean, he's a halfling. They're good at hiding. What does it look like when you are detecting the presence of giants? Great question. I think much like the way that Red deals with all magic, he doesn't close his eyes and pray or mutter words beneath his breath. He begins listening to the floor, the rocks and the trees. He literally puts his severed ears against the ground and sort of breathes in. It's bizarre to watch. You would think that maybe he's listening for a train coming down the tracks or the fall of footsteps. And in a way, he is. But when he stands up, he knows exactly how many giants are in a five-mile radius. You still sense the presence of these four stone giants. They are approximately where you had left them, Mm. though you can sense that they are slowly moving a little bit farther away. Well, they are moving. I think maybe I could slink back and get Oren. Why don't you set up camp, Doran, and I yeah. can try to slink back and, and get Oren. We we will be right over here, and, and Doran kind of points to, uh, I'm, I'm picturing we're on like this dirt road and the rain is so heavy, it, it's just like sloppy, mm. but there's like kind oh, of this... The river that runs beside the road has eroded some of the dirt to give you guys like maybe, I don't know, six feet. Yeah. I rim. love how the day is like reflecting the... Most Feeling? down our party has ever yeah. been. Mm-hmm. Yeah, losing Jack. God, everything is sort of mirroring the way we feel. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, Red weirdly has this sense of duty to Jack. I mean, with the way he and Jack have been these last few episodes, there's this strong urge to grab his now friend again. But he recognizes that Orin and Rest are more important right now. I'm going to stand up, and because we're coming back to Rest, I'm going to cast Pass Without Trace. On myself. So a veil of shadows and silence radiates from you, masking you and your companions from detection. For the duration, each creature you choose within 30 feet of you, including you, has a plus 10 bonus to dexterity stealth checks and can't be tracked except by magical means. So I'm still going to be the only one to do this. I'm going to cast it on myself and I'm going to head back to get Orin. I'll be back with Orin. Alrighty. Hey, uh, keep an eye out for this spot. Be safe. I will. And I and I give you a good proper hug, butt grab, our arm to arm handshake. You yes, know one of those those right. warrior Very handshakes. Satisfying. I think when you do it, I pull you in and I give you a hug. Aww. Oh, <laughs> we lost Jack today, Doran. You won't lose me. 
And Red begins heading down the road in like a deceptively stealthy way. I always love when Red has a chance to show that he is skilled. And this is definitely one of them. You see him hopping along the road during the day, but the minute Oren needs to be rescued yeah. or whatever, he's like, and I'm going to head back to Oren. And I picture us, we kind of put put up a small tent yeah, and yeah, build a small a fire, fire. Yep. and we make a hot drink. This is actually the first time we've camped outside without the tent yeah. in like a few days. Holy crap. I mean, this is reminding me of Barovia right now. I mean, the with the rain and the mud yeah. and the gray, it's very... And very much. you just lost one of your yeah. party members. Yeah. That's very reminiscent of Barovia. Exactly. And it's cold. Yes. And our leather armor is all just like so, you know, oh, yeah. when leather Ew. gets soaked. Chill, chill is, it's, it's to the bone. Yeah. But getting that fire going certainly yep. helps. And, and I think maybe Kraloth and I have a heart to heart. You've lost people in battle. Yes. And you. Oh, yeah. It's one by one. It was uh, not an easy thing to witness. You know, no. you start out on an expedition with ten of you, and then two months later, it's down to just you. The best thing we can do is be positive. Well, I'm also going to say some prayers if you don't mind. No, I don't mind at all. And Kraloff goes to like a kind of corner and pulls out his talisman and begins to mutter some words and Doran pulls out his um sharpening stuff and he sharpens up his uh axes the dents in my uh axe from hitting rock and so those i buff out and Mm -hmm. reform them i think it's such a gorgeous little vignette to see both of you as the night comes on and the rain gets even heavier crayloth maybe you've lit a candle you're just praying devotedly to your god and we hear shh 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 doran doing what he does almost in a reverential way Mm. doing his own practice quietly waiting for red to return red you are traveling down the road are you just on top of the road or in one of the ditches i'm picturing myself running in one of the ditches alongside the road but again this is red in his element he's taken back to where he grew up running between the trees and there is a bit of joy down deep within him you know under losing jack and Oren and the terrible tragedy that has befallen them just a few minutes ago But there is a little seed of delight remembering being a young tabaxi leaping from branch to branch. And every once in a while, there's a branch laying across the ditch that he hops and skips over and does a little tumble and and wipes the smile from his face as he continues to run. You feel your full quiver bounce on your shoulder blades. You hear the low rattle of all the arrows in the quiver. Mm -hmm. This is you and your element. Very much so. I spent so much of my life traveling alone that this is sort of the first time since becoming a party that I've gotten the chance to be alone doing something again. Roll a stealth check for me. All right. And this will be at a plus 10 because I have passed without trace. 23. You travel silently through the rain for about an hour. You come about maybe two thirds of the way toward where the swamp was where you left Oren and Jack. And you see him. He is a small creature in the ditch, trudging toward you, trying his best to be stealthy. Orin Yogovi, a drenched, despondent-looking halfling. His <laughs> waistcoat is caked with mud. He's shivering, and he keeps darting looks over his shoulder behind him to make sure he's not being followed by these hulking giants. He does not notice you. I'm probably running straight up to him. And with the mud and the rain, Red looks almost camouflaged with all of the mud on his face. And these two bright little eyes open like a foot before Oren's Ah! face. Ah, I'm sorry. Oren, quiet, quiet, quiet. Ah. Come here, bud. And I'm going to like put him on my back put his little hands around my shoulders and just start running back towards camp and talking to him. Sorry, we left you, bud. He's crying a little bit softly. It's okay. It's all right. Did you see what happened to Jack? No, I didn't. I stayed in hiding. It looks like they took him. They they petrified and they, and they took him. But we're, we're going to get him back, buddy. Don't worry. 
Okay. Don't you ever leave me again. I promise I won't. And I reach over my shoulder and like pat him on his back. He sings a little song to keep your spirits up, both of you, as you run through the rain. Through dark and wet and cold and lonely, we will make it through. Oh, that's quite nice. I actually. love yeah. it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, okay. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Doran is sitting sharpening his axe when he suddenly stops, almost as if I've just realized something, because I did. The symbol on the rocks that the giants were throwing at us. What about them? It's South Crypt. South Crypt, should I should I know that name? No, probably not. But it's an ancient dwarven stronghold. You don't say. Do you think that's where they're taken, Jack? I think it would be a place to start. Why don't you roll a history check and we'll see what Doran remembers. Thank you. 13. You remember from the stories that South Crypt was a stronghold and a silver mine in centuries past, but was abandoned and has since become a lair of monsters. So you've heard stories about dwarves wanting to recover this ancient civilization. It belonged to a realm of seafaring shield dwarves mm. known as the Hogdenar, mm. whose symbol consisted of the star and the fish uh, and a mountain peak, probably part of the symbol you haven't seen. Makes sense. I mean, these were the pieces of the fortress that these stone giants were throwing at us. I mean, it, it's a, a long shot, but it could be somewhere to start. I think Red kind of comes up the little hill Perfect. towards you guys at this point and drops Oren down. I got him, guys. Oren. He's all right. Oren. He's all right. We're sorry. Master Doran. Here, come to the fire. Come Master to the fire. Master it's so sit, good to see you. But he's saying a lovely little song. Yeah. And, and Doran grabs a, a nice big blanket and throws it over top of the shoulders of both Oren and Red, who Thank are you. sitting there next to each other. Is there any food? Of course, here, here. Yes, here. There's like a full banquet that Kralop yeah. was working on. <laughs> just, just a little something that I, I whipped up. Oh. Thank you. There's like raw fish in there. It's beautiful. So good. Yeah. It's like, like a little ceviche action. Yeah. I don't know what any of those words mean, but I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I didn't see anything on the way to, to Orin, and Orin didn't see anyone. No sign of the giants. None. Did you think of anything? Well, yes. The uh, the boulder that one of the giants threw at me it had the symbol of a seven-pointed star. Right. It's an ancient tribe of uh, shield dwarves, I... The name escapes me. I, I'm not good with names. But the name of the place is South Crypt. If for nothing else, it's somewhere to start. All I can hope is that these giants ha actually have a lair. I agree. I think that's a great place to start. And ultimately, we have to get our friend back. That's right. I think we should camp here for the night, sleep, rest, and then tomorrow head to S South Crypt? Uh, for centuries, my dwarven ancestors have been trying to get back in there. It was a very profitable silver mine at one point and a stronghold. But since then, it's been riddled with all sorts of, oh, who knows, could even be demons in the depths. Mm. We are certainly walking into danger. We have to go for Jack. Absolutely. Definitely we do. Now, I'm all for camping, but you really think that they're not going to do anything to Jack. You don't think that there's any rush on this? Uh, I think there's plenty of rush on it, but... I agree, Kraloth. Every part of me wants to go and get Jack right this instant, but if we want Jack alive, and we want to survive it, we need to be th smart about this. We need to be methodical. I think we should gather our wits about us, rest, and at dawn's first light, head out towards South Crypt. May Kelimvor keep Jack safe. Kraloth, you have a dream this night. You stand in a small forest graveyard shrouded in mist. The ancient oaks and sycamore shade the tombs from moonlight. This is a place of peace and order. You begin to walk the paths, and you hear a voice speak to you. Kraloth, you have fallen from your path. You have abandoned your order. Your destiny is unfinished. History repeats itself. As it was in the mists, so it is now. One by one your party falls, and you will be left alone. No. No. What must I do? How do I get back on the path? Prove yourself to me. Kalimvor? 
go forth into the wilds of Crypt Garden North and find the tomb of South Crypt. Slay the evils within. Only then will you be able to save him, to save them all. I'll do this. I'll do this as soon as I can. Is, is there anything else? Is Jack okay? Are, are we going to be... Restore the order. Thank you. Thank you, Kellenvor. Kraloth. 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 Uh, Dor- Doran. Kraloth. Doran. You're okay. Are Buddy, you, you're talking in your sleep. Uh, yeah, are you okay? Welcome, everybody. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. It was, uh, it, was a, it was a voice. It was, it was Kellenvor. He was talking to me. He was saying that, that I, uh, we need to go to South Crypt. He knows what's going on, and he says that the only way that I can save, that we can save Jack, is to go. You, uh, you, you dreamt that someone yeah. spoke to you? Kellenvor's on our side. It's going to be okay, but we have to go. We have to go there. And I look around the small tent that we're in, and the sides of the tent are dripping wet, but the sound outside is silence. It must be 4.30 in the morning. Everything is covered in frost underfoot. Yeah. I suppose now's as good a time as any to get going. We're all awake. I don't think any of us slept that much that night. No chance for breakfast then. Here. And I snap off a bit of rations from my pack. Thank you. And I think, yeah, I think as we get up and start moving around, I, there's a moment where maybe each of us look towards a patch of grass that any other day we would have seen Jack kneeling and praying to mm-hmm. Lathander on. And all of us feel that moment of pull, that tug on our heartstrings of... Missing him. Exactly. Red turns to Doran and says... We don't have our map anymore, but you have a map, Doran, don't you? you you've been scribbling along in your, I, in your book. I do. Do you have any drawings that you've made of, of South Crypt in the area? Well, because uh, you're an amateur. Yeah, a uh, cryptographer. Cryptographer. Cartographer. Thank you. Cartographer. You're an amateur yeah, sorry, cartographer. Yeah. Soon to be cryptographer. <laughs> and uh, now without our sort of magic map, we have to go nuts and bolts with this yeah, thing. Yeah, man. Analog style. So yeah. what does Doran's map look like? Doran pulls out his leather bound book and he cracks the binding on a page and he kind of opens it up in front of you and before he was displayed this page of really really basic scribbles and you could see there's like misspelling like amp fail is like a m f l e you know so like good. amp fail in dwarven and a bit of common i am not an educated dwarf so where we are there's a little star well, here, here we are. There's just a bunch of erased stars <laughs> all around the back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but before you, he pulls open the book and he says, so here we are. And there's just a straight line back to South Crypt. The road runs north-south. Exactly. You have been traveling north toward Crypt Garden Forest. Right. I love it. There's I love like the idea that we have that. to move back to yeah. the simple, but we are the simple we, ones. We all kind of like looked at Doran like doing his map and then we're like, well, what kind of, not like what's the point, but it was kind of, there was like an earnestness to it of yeah. just like, oh, that's sweet. Doran's making his map. Yeah. And now that Jack, cause yeah, Jack could do it and yeah. like did it legit. Yeah. But now that he's gone. And Doran pulls out his dirty hands from underneath his beard. And you see that there's this like dark line. Almost like it's ink on his hand. Mm. And you watch as he puts the line, and this is what he measures with, right? There's like a dark line. There's a little his knuckle. That's so cool. And so you see him go, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it was about uh, an hour and a bit south of here. In perfect parallel to the surprise that Red and Doran show, Jack, every time he pulled out that map or did something impressive... Kraloth and Red are just as impressed by the simple brilliance of Doran's approach to this. Mm-hmm. D- Doran, I'm so impressed. Well done. Oh. Yes, that's exactly where we are. That's exactly what it looks like. We'd be so lost without you, oh, literally. Yeah. And if you've ever seen a dwarf blush, it's not pretty. His <laughs> eyes kind of look a little funny. And Oh, those no, dumb, dumb. Man. Oh. This is wonderful. We can find Jack and South Crypt exactly from your map. We can do this, guys. And I, I think Red feels that excitement that, okay, we can do this. After mm-hmm. getting Orin, after having Kraloth's vision, after Doran having the map, we're, we're, we're rounding this. We can do this. We can get Jack back. Let's let's head on our yes. horses and let's head to South Crypt. Yes, we, we have can. to go north. Don't something from my dream. 
said that I I have to follow these instructions as as clearly as I possibly can because if I mess up, if we go south, the voice told me to go north to Crip Gun, to to South Crip. Come on, Oren. And I pick up Oren, I put him on Asta, and we head off. You'll find us a way there, right? Doran. Absolutely. All right. Yes. Follow your lead. Okay. Okay. Amakir is grazing peacefully in one of the fields beside the road as you guys mount up and you, your hearts hurt to see this beautiful mare unaccompanied by her rider. Mm. I'm going to hop off and I'm going to walk over and I'm going to use my ability to communicate with her. And I'm just going to tell her it's okay that we're going to get Jack back for her. And I'm going to tell her to follow us. Yeah, she does. Perfect. You can tell she's feeling a little bit sad. Guys, she's feeling a bit sad as we all are. But yeah, yeah. but let's let's turn this leaf. We got some monsters to slay, and Red hops on Asta and giddy ups towards north, the Crypt Garden Forest. Come on, Schiffer. You see the edge of the forest after just a little while. As the sun is starting to rise, it's dark. It occupies a huge, vast swath of land, as far as you can see, toward the west of the road. Well, and I'm going to do my primeval awareness again, and I'm going to see if I can detect giants within a five-mile radius. Within the forest, there are two giants. Asta and I ride over alongside Doran. Doran, I, I think I can see a few giants over in this direction. What does your map say South Crypt might be? Do you have any idea? Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's kind of all in this general direction, so. As the dwarf in the party who we've given the assumed knowledge about South Crypt, you would know that it could occupy all of this land. How do we find South Crypt? Kraloth stoically pulls himself off of Glyn and um, hands her an apple absentmindedly and begins to walk towards the forest. And he crosses his arms. And I'm wondering if you'll let me do something. So I want to roll survival. Um, survival is something that Kraloth made use of. It's, it's one of his highest abilities. But I think he looks for signs. He's looking for Kelimvor to guide his sight. So it's not so much that you're looking for a footprint, but you're looking for a place where two pieces of grass lay over each other or a place where the cloud seems to stack in a certain column. Exactly, exactly. This, these are like symbols from your God. And yes, symbols of my God. And then it's that seeing these things, that internal feeling of knowing that that is the mark. Roll for it. Cool. That's a 20. Dirty 20. I love it. So cool. As you're leading your horse through this marshy meadow, what, what sign do you see that you're going the right way? Kraloth looks at the forest and he squints and looks, you know, from side to side. And uh, every now and then his gaze falls upon a certain spot. But he doesn't see anything special there and he turns and continues looking on and he's looking for footprints and things but it keeps on going back to this one spot these two trees that upon getting closer they are almost the exact mirror image of each other just somehow the way they've grown they are perfectly identical or balanced if you will this is our mark what we're like miles away. <laughs> Is he talking? Is he talking right now? I can't hear uh, him. Does he know we're hundreds of feet away? What are you saying? Twin trees. Uh, almost. I mean, look at these. Let's just ride Catch down. up, He's Red. still talking. Catch up. <laughs> I'm kind of in between you guys. Well, you guys are way back there. Yeah, I've just kind of gone into this trance. Yeah. And just like walked off. Justin, I love that. Inspiration. I love it too. Inspiration. Yes. Well, I mean, I don't understand it, but if... Callum Vol says it's this way, then let's go this way. What Kraloth is telling us, it seems to coincide with what you are saying, Red, about where the giants are. Oh, I totally agree, but you know me and this religious stuff. It's, I mean, the idea of a god pointing the way to where we're going well, seems a bit... Well, keep your eyes open. We might start seeing more signs. Bingo, bingo. Oren, you stay here with the horses. We're going to go in alone. Don't do anything too heroic without me. That's all we do. You enter the wood 
through the gate made by these two parallel trees. You hear the hollow caw, caw, of crows. Moving into this forest feels like sinking into deep water. Sound becomes muted and the light changes quality as it passes through the canopy of leaves and moss. Crypt Garden Forest is dense, tangled, and swampy. Most of the time, you're traveling through water, and you're glad that you didn't bring your horses. The marsh doesn't impede you when it's shallow, and you slosh through boggy areas thick with cattails and marsh grass, all hung with creeper vines. Other places, you're forced to wade through hip-deep standing water, where submerged and slimy fallen logs tangle your feet. And no matter where you turn, tall trees grow close together and block out the sky, filtering every ounce of sunlight, leaving you in a gloomy, verdant maze. A low mist creeps out from the bushes ahead of you, flowing out over the water and lily pads where you stand. It appears there is higher ground ahead of you. I'll tell you, this is bloody miserable, this water. I hate trudging through it. Red would be taking not too much of a lead because we're all pretty close here, but at least 20 feet ahead. Just to make sure that I'm the stealthiest one should anything happen, that we can get the uh, opportunity. Can I roll perception? Of course. And not not only that, but I kind of picture red. Um, you're, you're stealthing up, and water is not stealthy. I was envisioning more just moving so slowly oh, okay. that the yeah, water is not better. rippling. And Doran, you're like neck deep in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's holding why your I'm axe so above miserable. your head. Uh, I'm gonna roll perception with a natural twenty. Oh. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Red, you see <laughs> the solid ground ahead of you, and from your position, you already notice gnarled roots of trees that grow around some stones there are ruins here do i get the impression that everything here looks fairly natural this is a very dense forest and i grew up in a continent where the trees often lifted themselves up and stepped over and moved back down there were plants the size of humans that could envelop a small child and oftentimes poisonous enough to kill a grown man by just touch with your high perception, you have not noticed any large game animals since you entered the forest, nor have you heard the sound of birds or chipmunks. No small creatures. I think I motioned for everyone to pause. Is there a way I could roll nature on the plants and surrounding area just to see what might be? Yeah, okay. Seven. Everything seems... Natural? Mm, normal. <laughs> it's awfully quiet in these woods. There's no large animals or birds here. No. And not only that, it's deadly quiet. Something bigger is picking them off. I'd <sighs> like to get to that higher ground, but... Me too. I'd also like to take our time getting there. Kraloth, do you have any of that pheasant raw? Yeah, sure. Stick some on the end of this, and I pull an arrow out and just extend it towards him. Skewer a piece on the end. Just a small piece? Just a small one. All right. And I'm going to just fire that arrow up towards the high ground. See if anything goes to it. Roll to hit. 27. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Your arrow sails upward in a graceful arc through the woods and clatters against stone. Hmm. I suggest we stay careful. Let's continue forward. Yeah. The foul-smelling mist curls around your feet as you pull yourself out of the water, dripping, covered in duckweed and algae. I feel like Doran would look like when you pull a boat out of the water, and it's just like draining for a very long time. So I stand on sort of the side of the... Oh. <laughs> Reminds me of like wearing a padded bikini top when you get out of the water and just water leaks from your yeah. boobs for like an hour. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know when that happens, I guys? know when that happens all too well. <laughs> but I'm trying to like not draw any attention to. So I am being mindful about uh, you can be stealthy when you're just draining. I want to look around on the ground now that we're on the stone top of this hill. Yeah. Particularly, I'm looking for any animal bones or discarded remains of anything that might have died up here. 22. 
So you look around for animal bones, and you do find some. There is a skeleton hidden under one of the bushes. It seems to have been dead a long time. You would estimate maybe six months or so. It's hard to tell what creature it belonged to initially because there has been some violence wreaked on these bones. Violence of what sort? Why don't you roll a medicine check? Natural one! There's been violence on those bones. (laughs) I mean, they're from a dead creature, obviously, but there are some markings on the bones that you can't identify. As soon as Kraloth sees the bones, just natural instinct, I'd like to do a wisdom check on it just to see if they are... I mean, medicine is wisdom, yeah. Oh, okay. Eleven? These bones have a peculiar set of markings on them not teeth, but also not weapons. You're not able to identify it either. Okay. He notices those details, but the main interest is, is this undead? No. Okay. You said that uh, Red's arrow hit stone. Yes. Um, looking around, is this natural stone or no. formed stone? I would love... To find a unique piece of stone in the immediate area surrounding me and try to identify it using my stone cunning. Please. So the gnarled roots of the trees on this solid ground have been growing around wide, flat stones, and it gives the forest floor here a patchwork appearance. You also notice that there, some distance ahead of you, is a stone stairwell leading down into the ground. Oh, and on the third step, you see Red's meat arrow. I think, is this fair to assume that this is South Crypt? A bingo. <laughs> bingo. Uh, you wanted to roll a stone cunning? So what this does is I'm going to make a history check and add double my proficiency. 23. These stones were hewn from the Sword Mountains some 6,000 years ago. So I guess Doran would kind of urge us with caution to proceed. Why don't you take the lead and I'll stand behind you. I'm yeah. going to cast Warding Bond on ah, Red. Thank you. We'll be on our watch. I'll watch your back door and you've got my back Kraloth with your Warding Bond and hey, and I put a hand on both of you and say, and let's be quiet about this. And I'm going to cast Pass Without Trace on the three of us as well. It okay. lasts an hour. Uh, so again, we will have plus 10 to our stealth going forward. There's no way the giant is down there with Jack. No. You're right. It's far too small of an entrance. But if there's another entrance to South Crypt, like you said, this thing could be massive and sprawling. It's possible that they entered through another way, and in a way that's much bigger. Kelimvor did lead us here, and as much as he might not be my god, I, I trust that we're doing the right thing. You're right. You're right. I shouldn't doubt. And of course, among all the foul things and giants, and there's one thing that we also have to remember. The dragon. The dragon that is supposedly in this forest. One thing at a time, okay? As Doran steps down onto the first step, the smell of the deep, cold stone caverns brings him right back to home, and a smile crosses Doran's face. Into the deep dark of the dungeon! Remember to like us on Instagram and follow us on Facebook. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. See you next week. Uh. Oh. Let's see you talk, Joe. Hi. Hey. Hi, it's oh. It's Joe. Let's see you talk, Joe. What up, what hey. up, what up, what up? Oh, let's see you talk, Joe. Keep talking, Joe. Keep talking, Joe. Oh. I turned to rub what's a bit. What's talking about? What's Joe talking about? What's you talking about? Oh, what's you talking about? Really?